Hey everyone, Andy Rafael from eTechnics.com and today we've got another preview of another X570 motherboard, this time from ASUS. This is the ROG Strix X570e Gaming. Let's take a look. So let's start by talking about the box. Typical styling really, what we'd expect on a ROG Strix board. You get a nice kind of view of the board and it looks pretty much like what we'd expect and what we've seen from other platforms such as Z390. There's a few little logos down the bottom, the main one being the Ryzen 3000 desktop ready logo. So you know it's ready for the third generation processors. X570 has SLI, Crossfire support, Game First, PCI Express 4.0. I don't know why they've made this so small. This is a very, very important feature uh, for X570. I would have made this much bigger and put it up here. Moving the box around, again we kind of get a, a first glimpse view of the board and also the rear I.O. which we will talk about in detail. Huge sort of specs listed around uh, the side of it and then some of the main kind of special features. So the ones that they're really sort of touting about is the 2.5G LAN and Wi-Fi 6 which is made possible thanks to the X570 chipset. Dual M.2 heatsink, the BIOS flashback button and ROG patented pre-mounted I.O. shield plate and the addressable headers Gen 2 which you know could mean something interesting but we will get into that. So as we kind of unbox it, which I'm going to attempt to do one-handed, the first thing that we see is obviously the board itself and this little box here. Now, in the past, this is kind of where we've expected um, Wi-Fi antennas and things like that to be. So I'm going to attempt to open it up one-handed, which isn't easy, and uh, see what's inside. But I'll take the board out, I'll get a few other bits out, we'll open this up and we'll be back. Okay, so as I predicted, inside here is the Wi-Fi antenna with the dual connectors on there. Um, yeah, pretty much a standard affair. Uh, inside here, we have to start with the user's manual. So uh, again, a typical kind of thing that we'd expect. Driver CD for people who still actually use them. And then we've got a couple of stickers. I'm sort of noticing this more and more with, uh, with various boards these days. So you have ones to kind of label up all your cables. You have ones for uh, ROG battery stickers, uh, fan labels, kind of a bit of everything. Uh, so yeah, pretty nice little touch. Uh, inside here, just a thank you for purchasing uh, this board. And then a cable mod voucher for anyone who wants some cables made up. Uh, having a look in the rest of the box, if we take this whole panel off, we get some cable ties for making things, you know, neat and tidy inside your chassis. We have various screws for uh, M.2, so you've got two of the mounts as well as two of the screws, or two of the standoffs and two of the screws. We get a, uh, a little door hanger, so we can pop that on there. Accessible area, enter if you dare, so that will sit there. Uh, and then other than that, we have one, two, three, four, four SATA cables, and they are... Yeah, so two of them are right angled and two of them are just kind of your, your straight generic ones. Other than that, inside we have a RGB header uh, cable. So an RGB cable, standard four pin. We also have a three pin RGB header. So every motherboard manufacturer I've seen lately are really kind of, you know, taking RGB seriously and they're bundling in sort of all this stuff. And then by the looks of it, we have a temperature probe, which you could essentially plug anywhere, um, sort of, you know, position anywhere inside your case and uh, yeah, measure the temperature and allow the software to kind of do the rest for you. So that's all the accessories out of the way. Let's move on to taking a look at the motherboard. And by the way, we will hopefully have previews of these boards as well. So we've got the X570 Plus Wi-Fi, as well as the X570 Pro, the Prime board. So let's take the motherboard out and have a look. Okay, so the board itself, ATX form factor, it is black, like we'd kind of expect. It does look very, very similar to what we've seen before, but they have changed a little bit around here. So, sort of looking at the styling, you can see that we do have some kind of black plastic on here, some nice kind of gunmetal grey uh, accented uh, sort of heat sinks around the CPU socket, and then the M.2 shields that kind of merge into to this bit, which is kind of like grated if that makes sense so it is perforated uh, and then we've got this little bit down here which has got some nice sort of led coloring in there uh, the choice of champions so some nice little sort of branding but this is obviously going to be fully controllable through um uh, a zeus or a sync and then you have the strix logo uh, just up here which again is going to be fully controllable and then the owl strix logo as well so some nice amounts of sort of rgb on there a bit of a weird bit of styling is um, you may remember I did a sort of video review, it might have even been on the Z390 Strix uh, eGaming and it had a fabric kind of tab on it. Now it looks like they've gone to uh, maybe rubber, but yeah, it's just a bit weird. I don't know why you need that on a motherboard. But moving on, CPU socket wise, obviously it's AM4. So uh, 
we basically have backwards compatibility for second generation Ryzen processors, as well as obviously um, support for the latest third gen processors when they land on July the 7th. In terms of the phases, it looks like we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 12, 13. So it looks like a 12 plus 4 phase design, which is an interesting one to say the least. Uh, there are other boards in X570 from other brands who have gone with like a, a 14 phase design. For some reason they've gone with a 12 uh, plus 4. So there, there must be reasoning behind it. I know there was a big hoo-ha in the back in the day with Z390 and what was going on with the phases, not just with Azus, but with other brands as well. So um, hopefully, you know, they're being clear with how they're clarifying this now. To get our power to the CPU, we are looking at an 8 pin and a 4 pin. I was actually maybe expecting two 8 pins, but I'm guessing as you move up the stack to something like the uh, the Hero board, that's when you're gonna see, you know, um, maybe a, a bit clearer design when it comes to the VRMs and obviously the power delivery. So also at the top, we've got lots of fan connectors. So we've got CPU fan, we've got CPU optional, and then a pump header. We've got a um, RGB four pin uh, header over here. We've got an addressable um, Gen 2. I'm not even sure what the whole Gen 2 thing's about, but that's gonna be an interesting one to see. Uh, RGB header. Moving sort of further down, we've got our 24 pin, then we've got our Type-C uh, connector, USB uh, Type-C. Moving even further down, we've got our SATA ports, which I'll talk through in a minute. But down here, front panel headers, we've got another addressable, another four pin, lots more fan headers for system fans. We've got our USB 3.1 or 3.2. Uh, some bog standard legacy USB 2.0 ports. Uh, moving along, we've got some just sort of generic um, connectors like your TPM and audio and stuff like that. A debug LED as well. It's quite weird to see a debug LED on a board like this, but no um, sort of, you know, power sort of reset buttons from what I can see. So yeah, quite quite an interesting sort of look at that. Uh, obviously memory, we have four slots here supporting DDR4. It'll probably be speeds of up to sort of, you know, 4,400 megahertz uh, and beyond if you're gonna be overclocking that kind of thing. Expansion slot wise, we're looking at a single X16 slot up here, which has got some shielded armor on it. We've got another X16 slot that, uh, as you can see, operates at X8 speeds, and then another, and that's got armor on it as well. And then the third one hasn't got armor, X16 slot, uh, but operates at X4. Obviously, if you are doing Crossfire or SLI, then um, this one's gonna go down to X8, so you're looking at X8 and X8. Um, and then you've got your two X1 slots down here as well for other expansion cards like USB, network cards, that kind of thing. Obviously, when it comes to M.2, you have got a slot up here, which is covered by the shielded kind of a M.2 plate. And then there's another one just down here as well. And uh, I'm guessing that they're gonna have uh, RAID support as well, which is gonna be stupidly fast when you think this is PCIe Gen 4 as well. For your other storage needs, there are four SATA ports here, uh, sorry, eight SATA ports here, uh, which are gonna have support for RAID 0, 1, uh, and 10 most likely, uh, all SATA 6 as well. As we move around to sort of the, the rear IO, you can see that it's pretty plentiful. There's not sort of, you know, huge amounts of USBs. Instead, they've given you some other kind of key features. So we've got DisplayPort, and obviously with X570, we get DisplayPort 1.4. Uh, you've got HDMI 2.0. There is a BIOS flashback button just on here as well. And then a, a USB port, but it's specific for um, sort of utilizing that, that BIOS flashback feature. We do have some more USBs up here as well. Uh, a couple more here, the super speed USBs. Uh, 2.5G uh, Ethernet gigabit LAN. Well, it's not gigabit, it's 2.5G, but you get the point. Uh, two antennas for your Wi-Fi 6. And as we showed you earlier, you do get that. Uh, Wi-Fi antenna with it. We've got our gold-plated audio connectors here and an SP diff. Now, when it comes to the audio, you can see that it has got the Supreme FX like we'd expect on a Strix uh, e-gaming board anyway. And you can see that it has got kind of the isolation down here as well and some high capacity audio uh, capacitors there as well. So yeah, a pretty kind of well spec board, nothing too out of the ordinary. I guess when it comes to a board like this, Strix e-gaming have always been really good because they offer sort of great value for money based on the features that you get. And you've got to think here, we've got three X16 slots, we've got M.2, we've got, you know, all of the great features from X570, plenty of SATA ports to keep you going, and a really nice kind of IO uh, plate when it comes to connectivity. Hopefully Azus get the price on this right. I believe that if they do get the price right, this is gonna be a really, really good board, a really big seller. Uh, but I'm really eager to see what the performance is like, especially with this 12 plus four phase design. It's gonna be an interesting one, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know exactly what to do, and I will see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.